Hello, today we're going to talk about two things, religion and Superman. Both of these are very hot ticket topics and the people that are really into them are sometimes not so nice when folks talk about them online. If I had any sense, I'd probably steer clear of these topics. But I feel I am more than qualified to talk on these topics. Allow me to show you my credentials. On the topic of religion, I am in fact studying religion at school. I am minoring in religion and culture. At the time I'm filming this video, I only have about three classes left before completing that minor. So I'm fairly competent in the subject. And Superman, well, Superman and I have a lot in common. We were both raised in Kansas, we both do journalism, and we're both bulletproof. That last one is a for now qualifier because I have never been shot. So as far as we know, I am in fact bulletproof like Superman. So there, I've provided my credentials so that you know that I know what I'm talking about. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about Superman and religion. <laughs> In June 1938, Action Comics No. 1 was published. This comic featured the first appearance of many comic book superheroes, the most notable of which was Superman, created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster. The comic recounts how baby Superman was sent to Earth by his father to avoid the destruction of his homeworld. His spaceship lands on Earth, where he is found by a passing motorist who brings baby Superman to an orphanage. As he grows older, baby Superman, now named Clark Kent, discovers that he possesses incredible powers such as super speed and strength. Clark decides that he must use his powers in a way that benefits mankind, becoming a champion of the oppressed. Over time, aspects of Superman's origins were altered. Most notably, he was no longer raised in an orphanage on Earth, but by Jonathan and Martha Kent. The Kents, much like the passing motorist from Action Comics No. 1, find baby Superman after his spaceship crashes on Earth. Rather than giving the baby to an orphanage, however, the Kents decide to raise him as their own on their farm in the fictional town of Smallville, Kansas. Although Superman was not the first superhero character, he helped to popularize the archetype and establish the conventions of such characters. Up until the 1980s, the best-selling comic books featured Superman as the primary protagonist. Due to his popularity, Superman has received countless media adaptations outside of comics. He has been the subject of radio shows, animated and live action TV shows, and even a Broadway musical. Superman has also inspired a number of films, most of which have been animated. The 1970s brought us the Superman film series starring Christopher Reeve, where the hero stood for truth and justice in the American way. The 2010s brought a reboot of the Superman film franchise, this time starring Henry Cavill as the Man of Steel. Cavill has portrayed the hero in three films, or four, depending on how you do the math. This version of Superman is less of an all-American hero fighting for truth and justice, and more of a Christ allegory. Prior to the 2010s, the figure that most people would draw a religious parallel to with Superman was Moses. Both are sent away by their parents to escape death and are adopted into a foreign culture. Superman's Kryptonian name, Kal-El, resembles the Hebrew word Kal-El, which can be interpreted as meaning voice of God, which historian Larry Tai suggests could be an allusion to Moses' role as a prophet. The suffix El means of God and is found in the names of several angels, such as Uriel and Gabriel. Also, the Nazis thought Superman was Jewish. Joseph Goebbels, Hitler's chief propagandist, publicly denounced Superman and his creator, Jerry Siegel. Speaking of Jerry Siegel, who was the writer for Superman, he was Jewish, so was Joe Shuster, who illustrated the Superman comics. However, both Siegel and Shuster did not actively practice Judaism, and they never acknowledged any influence of Judaism in the Superman comics. It's generally argued that any connection drawn between Judaism and Superman is purely circumstantial and potentially a subconscious decision by the creators. But then in the 1970s, Superman was given a religious parallel, and this time it was on purpose. I know I said earlier that the Christ allegory with Superman didn't start until the 2010s. That's because at that point, it's very in your face and very blatant. It's a little more subtle in the 1970s. I'm sorry if you felt misled by me. But anyways, Tom Mankiewicz, who was the nephew of Herman Mankiewicz, who was a screenwriter for Citizen Kane, subtly made Superman a Christ allegory on purpose for the 1978 film starring Christopher Reeve. Who, slight tangent, 
I think is the best Superman actor there's been. Sorry, Henry Cavill and Guy from Teen Wolf, but it's true. The way that Christopher Reeve physically transforms his body and voice when portraying Clark Kent versus Superman, chef's kiss. So 1978 Superman is a Christ allegory on purpose. His spaceship was designed to resemble the Star of Bethlehem, but frankly, I think it more closely resembles the skeleton disco ball from Scooby-Doo. But there isn't anything really to on the nose about Superman being a Christ allegory. I mean, there are a few lines about how he's on Earth for a reason and how he's here to help people, but those things alone do not make a Christ allegory. Basically, I'm calling Tom Mankiewicz a liar. Superman is not a Christ allegory in the 1978 film. I mean, he uses his x-ray vision to tell Lois Lane that she's wearing pink underwear in what is the worst scene in the entire film. I don't remember Jesus ever doing that in the Bible. Things get really egregious in Man of Steel and all subsequent DC films that Superman appears in. Like, it's so on the nose, it almost feels embarrassing. When I first saw Man of Steel, I didn't notice the obvious Christ allegory, but to be fair, I was 13 and hopped up on Junior Mints and Lemonade. When I rewatched Man of Steel to write on this topic, I was like, oh boy, I better keep my eyes peeled for all these subtle Christ allegories. But then, not even 10 minutes into the film, Russell Crowe says that Superman will be a god to humans once he arrives on Earth. So it doesn't get much more explicit than that. Bullet point comparisons between Jesus and Superman. Let's crank these out. Both use their powers to heal people. Jesus heals multiple people of illness and injury. He cures leprosy, returns sight to a blind man, and even raises a man from the dead. Superman uses his heat vision to cauterize a wound so that Lois Lane doesn't bleed out and die. Both are raised in humble working class homes. Joseph was a carpenter, Jonathan Kent was a farmer. And most obviously, both have atypical births. Jesus was conceived through Immaculate Conception. Man of Steel establishes that Superman is the first natural birth on Krypton in generations. In addition to this, multiple characters refer to Superman's actions as miracles. When Clark Kent is a boy, he saves his classmates from drowning when their school bus drives off a bridge into a river. One of the mothers of a classmate of Clark's calls what he did an act of God, that it was providence. Providence is the protective care of God. The climactic conflict in Man of Steel is Superman having to sacrifice himself to save all of humanity, which is like the main thing that Jesus is known for. And Superman is hesitant to sacrifice himself. He knows that it's for the greater good, but that doesn't mean he wants to die. This is a parallel to Jesus, who also did not want to die, and while he's being crucified, cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But Superman doesn't die. Yet. He does die in Batman v Superman. Sorry, spoilers for that. Throughout that film, Lex Luthor draws several parallels between biblical imagery and the existence of Superman. Also, I'll say it, I don't care for Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. He's not cool or intimidating enough. I understand why he was cast, because for these films, they've chosen to make Lex Luthor like an Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg hybrid, and Jesse Eisenberg played Mark Zuckerberg in The Social Network. I did like him in that film. It was a good performance. I like that movie. But Batman v Superman once again has Superman sacrificing his life to save humanity. This time, he does die. Batman v Superman also has scenes with people like laying their hands on Superman. There's a clip of a guy talking on the news about Superman and he calls him a messiah figure. There's a sculpture of Superman that gets vandalized with the words false god spray painted on it. Do you get it? Do you get that Superman is a Christ allegory? Do you get that people worship him like a messiah? Did you notice that? Yes, it was very subtle. Thank you, Zack Snyder. So Superman does die in Batman v Superman, but like Jesus, he doesn't stay dead. He's brought back to life in Justice League. Resurrected, if you will. I wish there had been a scene where, like, Ma Kent sees on the news that Superman is back, so she goes to the graveyard where Clark was buried and sees that his body has been exhumed, and that could have paralleled, like, Jesus' tomb being empty. They did not do this. Not even in the Snyder Cut, which took me three days to watch because I refused to sit still for four straight hours to watch a movie. So I've laid out my evidence for Superman being a Christ allegory, but I also laid out evidence for Superman being a parallel to Moses 
and that ended up being purely circumstantial, according to the creators of Superman. You could say that all these parallels I've drawn between Superman and Jesus are purely circumstantial as well, except that they're not. So in 2013, Warner Brothers targeted Christian audiences for Man of Steel. They hired a man named Craig Detweiler, who at the time was an associate professor of communications at Pepperdine University, to write sermon notes on Man of Steel. There was a website where pastors could go and download a nine-page pamphlet called Jesus, the original superhero. The entire thing was basically just a pre-written sermon about engaging with your congregation by drawing parallels between Jesus and Superman. I think the most shocking thing in all of this is that priests can just buy pre-written sermons? They can just plagiarize if they want? That shouldn't be allowed feel sacrilegious, to be honest. Also, sometime in the last eight years, Warner Brothers opted not to renew the domain manofsteelresources.com because now it is a website for roofing contractors. You might be wondering why Warner Brothers wanted to market Man of Steel specifically to Christian audiences. Why make the allegory so obvious? Well, I came up with two reasons. According to the Pew Research Center, 70% of Americans identify as Christian and the Christian audience holds a lot of box office clout. The Passion of the Christ earned $612 million at the box office. The movie doesn't even have to be good if it's targeted at a Christian audience. God's Not Dead made $64.7 million at the box office. That's a return of more than 32 times its budget. That might sound a little mean and cynical. I have a less cynical reason to make Superman a Christ allegory. It's because it's easy shorthand to make him likable. I mean, Jesus is a pretty likable guy. There's an entire religion centered around him. Even if you aren't Christian, certain actions that could be described as Christ-like, such as healing the injured or being self-sacrificing, are things associated with likable or good characters. Christianity is so embedded within our society that you don't even have to own a Bible to notice these parallels, but that's a whole nother topic that we are not getting into today. Basically, people like Jesus. So if you take traits that are associated with Jesus and put them on a character, that character instantly becomes more likable because they now share traits. This means that you don't have to spend a lot of time in your movie explicitly explaining to the audience why they should like Superman. I mean, Superman already has such a hold within pop culture that I imagine most people went into the film already liking Superman, but if this was not Superman, if this was new original character, by drawing parallels between the character and Jesus, it's easy shorthand to your audience to let them know that this is a good character. It also justifies the character's motives. Jesus does things that are righteous and good for humanity. So by making your character a Christ allegory, it lets the audience know that the actions taken by the character are also righteous and for the good of humanity. Is this good? Is this bad? I don't really think it's either. I'm sorry if you came into this video wanting me to have some epic takedown on the topic and utterly obliterate Warner Brothers. I just came here to point some things out. I personally don't think it's a good thing or bad thing that was done by Warner Brothers or Zack Snyder. I think it's just a thing that they did. If you really wanted, I'm sure you could take all of this as a larger meta commentary about how in modern society superheroes are almost elevated to the status of deities, people care so much about them and pour time and money into consuming the media. You could talk about the parasocial relationship that some people have with the actors in this type of media. You could talk about the fact that the Snyder Cut even exists, that people disliked the Whedon Cut of Justice League so much that Warner Brothers basically redacted a published film and replaced it with a better version. But like, is there any harm in any of that? I mean, I can't judge. That would be a glass house rock situation. A pot kettle black situation. Because I like superhero movies. I've seen pretty much every superhero movie that's come out in my lifetime in theaters. The first movie I remember seeing in theaters was X-Men The Last Stand. And the first movie I saw in theaters once I was vaccinated was Wonder Woman 84. If you wanted like a gritty, cynical examination of the superhero genre, sorry I didn't provide that. Just go watch The Boys or Invincible. Go get an Amazon Prime subscription and watch those. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman! I saw Man of Steel in theaters when it first came out 
And there's a part in the film where a cop asks Superman, like, how they can trust him and how do they know that he'll work in the best interest of the American people. And Superman basically says, I'm from Kansas. It doesn't get much more American than that. And people in the auditorium cheered. Kansans go wild when we get any recognition that isn't related to the Wizard of Oz. It makes us feel relevant and important. Thank you.